and... Tell Key, CN is good, Nickelodeon is evil. I, I would not say that. Uh, okay, there's, there's a pro and con to everything. Like, Cartoon Network, they had their stupid shit. Like, they had... They, they, I remember when they did CN Real. I mean, yeah, they... they... But that, that's way off topic. But I mean, I guess you can give respect to Cartoon Network in... They are... I know people shit on Teen Titans Go, and I've been seeing people in the chat do this, you naughty, naughty boys. But... Here's the thing. Without a mainstay show, they can't experiment. Like, it's... You know... Uh, it's kind of like the Walt Disney quote, you make money to make movies, you don't make movies to make money. It, it, cause, yeah! Because <laughs> people say, like, the... Um, that Cartoon Network has not had a good original show, but I would argue, like, once you bypass the, um, you know, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Teen Titans Go, the original programming they have is some of the best that they've had in a while. Because you have, um, Victor and Valentino, which is made by a Hispanic, you know, audience. You have Villanos, which oh. uses Cartoon Network Latin America. You, um, they're op they actually released a new cartoon now from, uh, Cartoon Network, uh, UK, which is now being renamed Hanna-Barbera Studios again. And, you know, th those people were, like, the creators of Gumball and stuff, which opened up a lot of, uh, experimentation with multimedia animation. You have, I, I know this is a point of contention right now, but I do not blame Cartoon Network Studios, I blame AT&T, uh, with <laughs> Infinity Train. You have uh, Mau Mau. You have Summer Camp Island. There is a lot of good, but you gotta take the active effort to look. And and the the truth is, is that Teen Titans Go, at, which is not even a Cartoon Network show. Keep in mind, this show is not a cartoon cartoon. It is a Warner Brothers cartoon that is aired on that is aired on Cartoon Network. It is not counted as Cartoon Network original programming. Okay. It's kind of like how Johnny Test was exported into the U.S. or any Teletoon show or um, Thundercats Roar and all that stuff. Those things are Warner Brothers properties. They are not Cartoon Network properties. Oh, fuck. But right. I, um, um, I, I, I feel like also Teen Titans Go is, is overhated. I'm sorry. I, I've actually watched some modern episodes of Teen Titans Go, and they've been doing, like, a lot more crossovers and stuff, and I think they found, like, their rhythm, which is something that can be said about quite a few of their shows, like, Gumball had the same thing, where they reached a, a meta point that, if you're not into meta humor, then you're not still not gonna like Teen Titans Go, but they reached Damn a it. rhythm that I think works well, because they... They solved the issue that Teen Titans Go never had a straight man of the group, but they made it that with the things that they cross over with, they have either a straight man with the with the thing that they go to, or the character that they have as their um, foil is so insane that Teen Titans actually become straight men, and you get that with like the Freakazoid special and the Beetlejuice special and stuff, and you know it kind of gives off. Um, not as good as the Lego movie, but almost the the feeling of the Lego movie that they just really utilize the stuff that Warner Brothers has IPs for. And if that is not doesn't float your boat, then that's perfectly fine. But I don't think you it is fair to the creators of Teen Titans Go, nor is it uh, you know fair to fans of it to say that this is the root of all evil in in the animation TV industry right now. Uh, there's it's also like how it's unfair to say that SpongeBob is the root of it because it is not the it is not the creative team behind SpongeBob. It's just how that it's wants the business it to practice. Air all the time. Yeah, I would argue Nickelodeon is a lot worse than than Cartoon Network with the fact that they actually pick up a lot of good properties, but they do not. But they set them up for failure. Mm -hmm. And I really hope with Nickelodeon's um, deals with both Paramount Plus and Netflix that they that they can um, that they can uh, start to take more risks 
Because I, I feel like the the end, the moral of all this is that cable is dying. And so they try to make conservative economics based off of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the big things is the fact that uh, Cartoon Network, the cable network, is veering towards more um, kiddie preschool programming. But Cartoon Network Studios is actually taking on more experimental animation with that uh, Cartoon Cartoons announcement that they are looking for people within the studio and outside the studio to create shorts that range from experimental to pilot shorts to uh, adult to teen to kid animation. Uh -huh. And you know, and that's because they have the freedom of the streaming service with HBO Max. And I think people are more cynical about the state of TV animation than I think they have the right to be. There's a lot of scummy shit. But that is not the. But I don't think the scummy shit is the the norm. I feel like there is a, more of a positive outlook on the diversity of animation now than we had a few years ago. All right then. Who is yelling, Annie, in the background? Our neighbors. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, since you mentioned, you know, whatever is overhated or whatnot, um, I'm just like, I, I can't, I think this is like going back to the root question of this entire stream. Um, what else do you think gets overhated? Like in film or? Or pretty much in anything. Uh, I mean, um, hmm. I, I'm trying to think, like... I feel like the Cars franchise is overhated because the only really bad thing about Cars was Cars Two. Yeah, I mean Cars One, I think, is a very cozy movie, but I think it got overhated because the fact that it was put between two Brad Bird films, which, you know, because we had like trailblazing things with like human animation and all this stuff, and very. Um, I think highbrow stories, like the beginning of highbrow stories with Pixar, and then you have Cars, which is a much more down, silly given it's a uh, uh, city in Cars. It's a much more down to earth plot, mm -hmm. and maybe even like tropey plot. But I don't think tropes are a bad thing. I mean, they are called tropes because they work, um, and I don't think people wanted that at the time. And I think that created this um, animosity towards it. When, but when I, I used to watch Cars so much as a kid and I thought it was just a very cozy movie. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually one of those movies that mom loves watching. Like when she first got it on DVD or she first watched it, she loved the hell out of it. She would watch it whenever she would have like a bad day. So, it's a comfort movie. She would also like, sorry if I'm going off the subject about, um, uh, no, which go ahead, go ahead. no, like mom used to tell me stories when she was a kid or or dad is that every summer the whole family would go on a field trip and just like go on a road trip like up the state or something. Yeah, and I think and I mean that's what the inspiration for Cars was was Lassiter. It it had to be something and like his, that. And his family going on road trips to Route 66 and they were enamored enamored by the small towns and everything that you would find on Route 66 and they wanted to make something around that. And I think that's just a very nice plot. And I and I don't know if it's like something in American media where there is some kind of weird distaste for cozy movies because I feel like we need something that I don't know if we've been conditioned that we need super fantastical high stakes plots and not uh, movies that kind of just give you a chance to breathe yeah I, you notice that a lot of like especially Miyazaki films oh or, yeah or Miyazaki films, films are or, filled with or atmosphere films that come from people who worked for Ghibli or something that a big part of their films is just watching the characters live and and having the time to breathe. And I guess some people can find that to make the movie slow or drag, but I, I personally really like it because I feel like it it utilizes the, um, the point of visual storytelling. 
So I, I don't think that visual storytelling is only for high stakes moments. I think we sometimes just need those moments of characters cooking or characters having conversations and learning about each other's cultures. I, I think that is that is a very valid place. And when you think about it, Pixar really didn't do that until that point. Yeah. I would argue Ratatouille may be like the only other film that really does that. Yeah. <clears throat> How would you define a cozy movie? You know, not super high stakes, it's just, you just feel comfort with the movie because it's just, you don't have to like, be invested in these super Damn. deep stories and everything. You know what I feel is somewhat of a cozy movie, but also I think also gets too much hate? Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Brother Bear. Oh, I love Brother Bear. Brother Bear gets too much hate for two reasons. One, I'm it's... I'm playing now. Yeah, like, firstly, it gets hated for have borrowing too much from other Disney elements, which technically, that's almost every Disney movie. They use a lot of familiar elements. A lot of Disney princess movies does that. But when Brother Bear came out, people trashed it because of that. The second of which is that they felt ripped off when they thought they were going to get this movie about... You know, the world of the deep spirit and everything until um, Kenai was turned into a bear and the whole movie just turned into a childish act. Which, Which if, you, if yeah. you paid attention to the title of the movie or the trailers, you would know that's going to be the main I plot. I mean, didn't they advertise the Rick Moranis um, caribou or whatever in the, mo in the trailers? I, the, the, the most that I know of is that I already knew what I was getting myself into. He was going to be turned into a bear and he had to figure a way to be changed back. Like, I was expecting that. The first half was, it felt like a different movie, and I'm not saying it was bad. It was a very big setup about the difference between love and revenge. Um, it's just, it's still a kid's movie at the end of the day, and I think that whole scenario between Kenai and that kid, uh, the, the bear cub, is that he needed to look things at things from a different perspective. Um, part of me for name dropping is Shea Frillis Productions, like, he complained about that part, and I was just thinking, like, you, dude, it's kind of your own fault for setting yourself up to assume that there was gonna be this thing about only spirits and such, but this road trip movie about, you know, finding the, the spirits and getting changed back and everything, that was heavily advertised like that, so you've got no one to blame but yourself if you're gonna complain about that. Yeah, I mean... They had it more on the tin than Brave did, which someone asked, why do I hate Brave? One, I, uh, what Brave was supposed to be was something that was not what it became. Um, they screwed over Brenda Chapman a lot. But the other big thing is I also, from you know, if you judge it on what we got rather than what we could have gotten, I also just think Brave is a very mediocre movie, and I don't like the protagonist. I think Merida is one of the most insufferable Disney princesses we've ever had. I I just don't enjoy her. Who? Uh, Merida. Oh, yeah. Brave... <sighs> Sorry if I sound a little distant from the microphone. Brave has a number of issues in and of itself, like... I used to assume that it just looked like a mish between, like a match between Beauty and the Beast and Brother Bear, in that there's a family problem and they needed to see each other through an incident. Like that that's just on the very big surface. I mean, the concept of the bear and the bow was a lot more intriguing of a concept than what we've gotten. I remember it was gonna be called that, and I also remember Newt. Which was a cancelled project, and uh, I they, was... They, they cancelled it because it was very close to the concept for Rio. Ah, uh, yes. Because, uh... Because... I'm guessing they didn't want to face the same issues like what Disney did with The Lion King and Kimba the White Lion. Which is bullshit. Oh, uh, it's more... Like, it's seen more as bullshit now than ever be, uh, thanks to, um, Adam from Your Movie Fuck. Sucks. How is this on easy? <laughs> I know! This is ridiculous! This, this fish is not showing any Unpopular mercy. Unpopular opinion, but I liked it. I know a lot of people that like the Ted movies. Ted movies? Ted, the uh, Seth MacFarlane. Oh, that movie was funny the as Seth shit. The Seth MacFarlane, um, yeah, Wahlberg that, movies. God, dude. 
I think that movie probably gets bad rap because they take their uh, their shit out of Mark Wahlberg, who I think is a bit of an underappreciated actor. Good old Marky Mark. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously he had that one terrible moment in uh, what was called The Happening, where he goes, oh, what? No. no. I mean, also, all the characters were poorly written. And yeah, so it's not really his fault. It, that was, was that a Shyamalan film? That explains a lot. <laughs> I think it was Shyamalan's first R-rated film. And you could see that he went full gratuitous with it, with the fact that he, um, you know, the big thing in the movie was so many mass suicide scenes. <sighs> oh my god. And I mean, when you think about it, the concept for The Happening is not an awful one, of like, there's this sudden disease that makes pe that makes people go insane and want to kill themselves. That is a that is a very good concept for a horror movie, but I think the whole twist that it's plants doing it, it's like, Honestly, I think it would have been better if it was just some kind of eldritch psychological thing. Go Hitchcock with it, where you don't, where we still don't know what it was. But I don't, I don't know if our modern audience, what, modern mainstream audience would be too keen on something that is that, um, how would you say? Not introspective, but, um... Exper experimental, mm -hmm. not uh, subtle, not whole, you know, it's not, uh, it doesn't, it, it would not follow the usual narrative journey. But, you know, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs>